Wow. Kevin Learboss and I are back to you with another head to head solution to a real challenge. This one was crazy. Here's the deal. We've got this original list. What we know about this original list is that Chastity, Dylan, Bell, their parents. The regular font means these are children. So Mike's parent is Dylan. We scroll down. Therese's parent is John. How do we unstack that so that it looks like this? So that we can see that Dylan is a parent of Mike, Jonah, Jean-Michel, and Howard. So here are a couple of things to notice. Basically, we want to get at a pivot table. So I am going to do a solution in Excel's Get and Transform, and I know that my final step is going to be pivot, don't aggregate. Remember that one. I did a video on that. But how am I going to set myself up to do this pivot, don't aggregate, when the data looks like this? Here's how we're going to do it. To start this, we need another column. I'm going to call this people two. And I want this data copy over here in this column. Next, I want this data. I highlight that. Let's get rid of those marching ants. Okay, I want to highlight this. And I want to replace, okay, I'm going to go home, replace. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to find what? I want to find anything that's bold, okay, and replace it with the word parent and a gold fill. Okay, replace all. Made seven replacements. Okay, close. All right, now we have our parents. And we need another column so that we can count the children. Equals. If. People two equals parent, then zero. Otherwise, look in the cell above, which in this case would be E3, and add one to it. Now, it's clear that Howard is the fourth child of Dylan. Let's get rid of these filter buttons so we can see what's happening. All right, now let's go into getting transformed. With the cursor clicked in the table, data from table, here's our query editor and our data. Here's one thing I'm going to do to get set up. I'm going to convert this to text. And I'm going to add a custom column. Add column. Custom column. Say children. And I'm going to do this. Child. Space in quotation marks and in order to concatenate child count. Child zero one two child four. There's Howard. Also what we have to do is get the 
parents out into their own column and next to each child. Add a conditional column. Call it parents. If. Let's go with children. Equals child zero, then bring me back the data that's in people. Select a column, and the select a column is going to be people, otherwise, null. Okay, there are the parents. Let's do a fill down, right click, fill down I don't need this column anymore remove I'm gonna move parents all the way over we can now filter out anything in people two that says parent or child count that's zero let's go here filter out parent Okay, now Dylan is in here four times next to his four kids. We can get rid of the child count column now. And now we're ready for the pivot. Don't aggregate, remember that. Oh. Transform, pivot column. Children, what do we want in values? We want people to. Advanced options, don't aggregate. Okay. Ah, there we are. There we are. There we are. Dylan. And Dylan's four kids, John, John's five kids, Bell, and Bell's two kids. We're there. File, close, and load. It goes straight to the workbook, and we got what we wanted. Lord of mercy. Now, what happens if we have more data? So we'd have to do this, copy, and then I'm going to paste this over here, but this does need to say parent. Call this parent, and that needs to be bold. And we need Thomas and Angel over here. Okay, let's go to sheet two and refresh our query. Right click, refresh. There we are with Lester and Kate and their children. But you see that we have to do some prep work in Excel in order to get getting transformed to help us. It would be really difficult to do this all in getting transformed. And I'm not aware of a way that getting transformed can tease out bold data because you see the source data in getting transformed, none of it was bold. Let's see what Kevin has to show us. All right, Kevin. We're ready for you. So I came up with two different ways to solve this. Let's look at the first method, and I'm going to check the first five steps because they all go together. So we're going to highlight this range of cells that includes the parents in bold and the children that are not in bold text. Control F. We want to go into the advanced options, and we're going to find or select only the bold cells by doing this, going like that. Choose format from cell. We're going to just pick Dylan and then find all, it shows that we have seven cells with bold text in that selection. 
Control A highlights those cells. I'm going to close that. And up here, I'm going to put a yellow background on those cells. Uh, the next thing that we have to do here is use the filter and filter by color to yellow. And then I'm going to type in a one and I'm going to drag that down. So now when I take off this filter, we can quickly see that the one, every time we have a bold text, which is also now yellow background, we have a one over here. So that's the first thing. Where are those parents? The only way that we can identify them is by the bold text. Let's go to the next couple of steps here. Um, step six and seven. We want to put in a parent ID. That means that uh, for every different group, parent and children, this is a one. So we see a one here. Another parent and children, we see a two. This is this is almost like a family ID. So this continues all the way to the bottom. Three, four, five, six, seven. So this is dependent on the formula to the left. Now over here, we want to have a child ID. So when it's a parent, we get zero. This is the first child, second, back to a parent because of a zero. One, two, three, four, a zero. And that goes all the way down. Now, this key simply, if we press the F2 key, it just adds up the, these two values. Now we have a key or a unique identifier for um, everyone in our list, both parent and child, all the way down to the bottom. Now let's look at steps eight and nine. Uh, I'm going to just ungroup that. And here we have just a very simple counter. You could use the row function, or you could just type in one, two, three, drag it down. This is a match function. Very simple. Looking for a three, family three or parent three, the first time we find it in here. So that's going to be Bell. And let's say down here, we're looking for number six, and that is parent number six, which is John, all the way down here. So now we can use the index function to display all of our parents uh, from this original column. And the last thing we have to do is show the children that belong to that parent. So what I did was I used this method. Let's go up here, press the F2 key, and I'm saying, give me the counter, uh, which represents the first parent, and then this would be the second parent all the way down, plus, in this case, I want to see the second child for that parent. So when I put those two together, that's one decimal two, and I see it right there. I look in my key column, and 1.2 is Rama, who is a child with the parent of chastity. So that goes, you can sort of download this file later on and uh, audit this. This is pretty much it. Uh, you take the five, let's look at another one. Let's look at Dave. Press the F2 key. This is parent number six. This is child number four. And so we're looking for six decimal four in here. And we see it all the way at the bottom, near the bottom here. So there it is right there, 6.4. So once we find that, then we just use, once again, the index to display that name of Dave. So that is how this solution works. But this part is manual. So I was thinking, OK, I know that VBA can do this. I just have to go and uh, find the code. So here is the code. And we're going to copy this. So there's a couple things we have to do. But uh, this is quite flexible. If you're OK using macros, this is actually a great way to do it. So we have to go to File and Save As. We have to make sure that this Excel file is macro enabled. So I'm going to just move this up a little bit. And right here, if you can see it, I'm going to select macro enabled workbook. And I'll just give it a new name. At the end, I'll put VBA. And then I just want to save this. So now we can put macros in our file. I've already copied that code. Uh, let's go over to developer, visual basic. And we want to go into uh, this workbook here and add a module. So right click that insert module. We're just going to paste in that code simple as that. And I'm going to just copy this because I want to make sure I don't misspell. This is a UDF. It's like a, a, a function that is created in code. So let's go over here. Uh, we're just going to type in equals. I'm going to paste that in. And all we have to do is just tell it to look at a cell. So when I press enter, it gives us a true false all the way down. Now, because I used ones and zeros or ones and blanks here, all I have to do over here is just go like this and say plus zero. That converts it to a one or a zero. That way, all the formulas I had from the first solution I showed you will work here as well. So when I press this, this looks identical. It should be, right? Let's look at this. I think it is exactly the same. 
maybe just the width of the columns. But now that we're using uh, this UDF, it shows that very, very easily. What if these? What if the parents weren't bold? What if they were underlined? So what if none of them were bold, but it was underlined instead? All we'd have to do is go back over to our code and simply change this. Watch this. Put dot instead of bold. We would just say underline right there. So that would do it. So it's very flexible that way. You could, it could be anything that you see when you press the dot. It could be the color. It could be the background color. Uh, any of these different things in here would work. So let's go back to our dot bold. And this is a pretty neat solution. But if you can't use uh, macros, then you could do something like this. Did you see that? Man, Kevin is one of those scary people. Man, fortunately, he's using his powers for good instead of evil. I had never seen that dropper for getting a cell format. Never saw that before. Thanks, Kevin, for showing me that. But as far as this solution of then stacking this data, you got a formula solution. I gave you getting transform. Kevin took you into the VBA world. You know, if you have the, the backbone for that, the fearlessness, yeah, VBA can work. So you got VBA, getting transformed. You got Portland, Oregon, Toronto, Canada, man. And I'm telling you, unstacking data is a need for a lot of people. I taught a workshop at a medical school once, and these people were copying genome data off of a web page needed to be unstacked so there you go you got solutions thank you and please put your hat on go over to Kevin's uh, YouTube channel check him out subscribe please subscribe to this channel be in touch with us let us know if you've got questions we might make a video for you head to head